Hello, welcome back to another episode of Pillars of Eternity. Um, so we are here, we are still in, I forget the name of the town. Copper Lane is the part of the town we're in. I guess there's no name for it. Um, First Fires is where we need to go. Um, we're kind of just exploring Copper Lane right now. I think we're going to be in the city for a while. Um, we only have two areas left in Copper Lane to explore. The Hall of Revealed Mysteries... And actually, that takes us to the first fires. So, just one place. So, we went to Scrivener's Dormitory. We know all these people work in the dorm. So, let's see what we got going on. Um, yeah. I keep hitting the wrong buttons. Of course. Okay. Stole something from the hall. Okay, it looks like we're going to get like a mystery here. Somebody stole something. Looking for someone to blame, so, so stay clear of it for a few days. If you think these books are impressive, you should see what Grandma keeps in the back. Okay, so maybe this is kind of a big place. Let's see. Ooh, it's nice. Probably the nicest While building we've been in yet. Here, if we had the time, of course. Do we? Alright, so let's see what we got going on. Welcome to the Hall of Revealed Mysteries. Hail and well met. Oh, what? Okay. The woman barely glances up from the tomes on the table as you approach. She's not even at the table. You're welcome to browse the stacks, but mind that you keep your voice down. This is still a temple, after all, and Grimda doesn't tolerate disorder. Um, it looks like a library. Her eyes grow wide and round. That's because it is. Whale is the god of mysteries and answers, encryption and decryption, concealment and revelation. She raises her hands to the rows of shelves. Its guidance comes through the understanding of the unknown and protection of hidden knowledge. The Hall of Revealed Mysteries was built to celebrate that. To think there's such a place in the Deerwood. Incredible. I love the glimpse of the archives. How many secrets must sit upon these shelves? Uh, fascinating. That didn't really answer my question. Yes, it is a library of sorts. Temples dedicated to whale tend to hold vast stores of knowledge. We use that knowledge to unravel and preserve the mysteries of the world. Okay, who's Grimda? Texas speaks reverently. Why, she's the High Archivist. She's one of the most accomplished scholars alive today. Nothing goes on here without her knowing about it. Almost nothing, anyways. She scratches behind her ear. You should probably tread lightly around her today. Okay. The books on these shelves cover the history and mythology of Old Valia. Okay, reach out for the soul. You see nothing at first. Inky darkness filling your vision. The dust of eons flooding your nose. You hear a strike, and a torch gutters into flame, revealing a man without a face, and a library of books flickering in the dull orange glow. He moves to the closest shelf, sliding the torch into a socket, and gingerly pulls a black-bound book into his trembling hands. He flicks through it lovingly, caressing each page before turning to the next and the next. Finally, he finishes, placing the book in a satchel to his side, and takes down the torch. He spends hours wandering, reading, collecting, until his satchel is as thick as he himself and half as heavy, and begins to make his way back to the entrance with a barely audible sigh. He draws two decaying doors closed, and the torch is extinguished. Right. He had a name. Priest of Whale, Priest of Whale, what else we got over here? Anything? Ooh, a book. Ten Years of Dawn, Your Customs, either one of those sound all that interesting. Uh, this place is massive. Hundred visions be revealed to you. What's this? Records of books borrowed and returned fill the cubby holes. I thought this was like a map for a second. Um Oh, this is a different looking room. Oh, it's a hallway. That's why. Ooh, all well, these people just showed up. Um, 
Let's head back this way. Well, there's a big, like, eye over there. Who's this? Scrivener. Priest of Whale. Not seeing a whole lot. Keep searching. The obscured leaves clues for those who seek. This is Grimda. Okay. Greetings. An elderly dwarf surveys the stacks. Her skin looks as tough and wrinkled as walnut. Despite her stature, she manages to look down her nose at you. You are welcome to look around, but let the priests and scriveners continue their search. She shoots the nearest robed figure a withering gear at glare. Wouldn't do to give them any other excuses. Interesting. So what are they looking for? Maybe I could find it? Tell me about yourself. I'd like to know more about Whale. Oh, uh, let's just volunteer to help. She sizes you up, stroking, stroking her chin. Could you now? She scowls at the road priest again. You certainly couldn't do worse than this lot, anyway. Thieves made off with an ancient scroll of Whale. They intend to blaspheme by selling that which should remain hidden, a secret of the hundred visions. Her wiry eyebrows arch over her spectacles. The guards caught one of them, but were overzealous in their interrogation. All they could piece together was something about a farmhouse and the road to Deerford. Track the thieves down. I don't care what you do with them, but bring back the scroll. Whale rewards the persistent seeker, and so do I. An ancient scroll of whale? There's a fine prize. I mean, a worthy task. Kind of funny. Uh, had questions about the missing scroll? Uh, tell me what you know about the thieves. Very little, except that they were foolish to believe they could steal from the god of secrets. That, and they were fleeing to a farmhouse. How should I handle the thieves? However you can. Kill them, rob them, leave them. It makes no difference to me. She waves a hand and smiles grimly. I'll consider it one of Whale's mysteries. Hmm, what's so special about the scroll? Whale is the god of secrets. If I told you that, I'd cheapen it, wouldn't I? She cackles. It's a parable. The kind that nourishes the inquisitive mind and poisons the foolish. Okay. What is this? Impossibly, the painted eye seems to move whenever you turn your back. Okay, well, nothing but mysteries here. Alright, so let's um let's see what we have as far as quest goes. I think the first fires is where we need to go on the next quest. That quest is taking us to Deerford, which I don't know where that is. Farmhouse is probably gonna be in between if I had to guess. Right, once we get out of here. I keep noticing smaller things about this game, like the physics characters walk around each other, stuff like that. It's really cool to me. Okay. Deerford, okay, it's an area we haven't been yet. So we're actually going to have to leave and go there. It looks like the last place we have to go. I don't know if there's going to be more places to show up or not. Oh, no, there's a lot more places over there. Interesting. Let's look at the quest. Main quest. Go to the Temple of Wodica. There's a temple dedicated in Defiance Bay. In the first fires. Okay. Alright, so let's do that. Let's head down to the first fires. Run! Refugee, refugee, refugee from where? First fires it is. And this is such a big place to explore. Like, it's huge. Okay, is that, is that the name of it? I'm not even sure. Who are you, commoner? Okay, this place isn't quite as big. Ducal Palace, Crucible Keep, Brackenbury, Temple of Wodoko. Okay, the rundown place, obviously, is where we need to go. Valiant Embassy. Alright, so let's go here first.
Who are these people? Are they just guards? Oh, those are my people. I'm an idiot. Uh... Noble. Noble. What is a statue of? I think we saw a similar statue earlier. Politics, infighting, greed, and a shrine to Magrin as well. Her clergy belongs there. Okay, these are probably going to be like soul glimpses. Yeah, it is. Okay. You see a small mobile stall covered with various goods. Oh, by the way, her name is Twelve Charms, Maggie Tiller. This woman is standing next to it, engaged in a lively discussion with a man who is holding one of the items she is selling. She has a light, friendly countenance and is trying to explain to the man how to control the item. He moves his hands around the top of it and mutters what sounds to be gibberish. After several attempts, he growls and thrusts the item back at her and starts to turn away. She stops him with a hand on his shoulder and holds the item up in front of his face. She traces a finger over the top of it, slowly and distinctly repeating the same phrase over and over. The object suddenly lights up, shining as brightly as a torch. The man's face brightens as well, and he looks at her expectantly. She runs two fingers down the side of the object, and the light extinguishes. She hands it back to him and takes her place behind, guiding his hands as she whispers the words to stay in his ear. Many failed attempts later, the man is able to light the object on every try. Elated, he hands it back to her as she makes her way behind the cart, while he searches for the appropriate coin. She places the item on a shelf under the back side of the cart, and replaces it with another from a small box next to it. Money and goods are exchanged, and she watches the man leave, satisfied with his purchase. Then she scans the crowd, looking for her next mark. Yes? Hmm, that if it didn't go uh, I thought it was going to. I don't want to see what that other guy say. This is a big area. We can go way back here. There's actually stairs back here? Interesting. Can't go through that door. So this way we will go. Other people are demanding to get in, and I'm like, we just walk in. I saw it on the bottom. Said a refugee was like, we demand to see the Duke. And yeah, we just walk right in. Ooh, this lady looks cool. Sidley. Well met, friends. The young woman wears a simple but well-tailored uniform. She watches the comings and goings around her with quiet attention. Any news to share, or are you just here to see the Ducal Palace? What's the Ducal Palace? It's the seat of government here in Defiance Bay. This is where Duke Admirath Hadrett declared freedom from Adarian rule some 150 years ago. She lowers her voice and grins. It's also a hotbed of regional politics. Trust me, the gossip here beats what you'll find at any tavern or brothel in the city. Ah, dear wood politics, it changes too quickly to be worth keeping up with. Better to strike up a conversation in the taverns than try to loiter inconspicuously in the palace quarters. Who are you? I'm a page here at the palace. I deliver messages and run errands for the duke and his advisors. The pay is not great, but I think I can't think of a better introduction to politics. What goes on in here? Where to start? We've got meetings, public hearings, and ceremonies. That's just the stuff that happens out in the open. She leans a little closer. This is where the Duke and his key advisors work, so there's always someone bartering for a favor. Unfortunately, I'm not at liberty to talk about that side of things. But if you want the official version, she clears her throat and gestures counterclockwise on the palace. We have a shrine devoted to Magrin, official records, and chambers for public hearings and council meetings. Talking about the shrine. It's a symbol of Magrin's protection of Defiance Bay. She's represented the revolutionary spirit of the Deerwood ever since independence, and her involvement in creating the Godhammer bomb only, aff bomb only affirmed her importance to us. She scratches her neck. That's also where the first of the sacred fires burned. But Firga, the tranquil ardent, has also tr has had trouble keeping them lit. Sorry. Uh, is there a hearing going on now? 
Sure is, Duke of ours been meeting with some of the city leaders for weeks now, trying to figure out how to address the legacy. The whole business is terribly secret, though. I tried to sit in the gallery during my lunch break one day and got turned away, she sniffs. But a lot of the talk concerns animancy, so there's good reason they're keeping the meetings behind closed doors. Let's see. Okay. So, let's have a look around. Acorn Helm, Frog Helm, Winged Helm. Okay. Nothing of interest there. How big is this place? Shrine of Megrin, Hall of Records. This is obviously where stuff is going on. We don't want to leave yet. Let's go to the shrine. Who be you? Fear guy. Okay. You're the one who's supposed to keep him alive. Most bright maker and transform us with your flame. Hail, traveler. The woman's head is bowed as her lips move in prayer. Just as you approach, you catch her glimpsing at the statue near her. She notices you and forces a smile. Praise be to Magrin. Magrin. Then welcome to her temple. How may I be of service? You seem upset. What's wrong? Her shoulders slump. This is about the fires, isn't it? She puts a hand on her shoulder, on your shoulder. They're just symbols. You can't put your faith in them. Uh, the fires? The sacred pyres all around town. You must have seen the statues of, go of the goddess around the city, holding up empty braziers. Braziers? I don't know how you say the word. I'm going to be honest. Braziers like a bra. Brazier? I don't know. I'll be honest. I really have no idea. I've kept them burning steadily for 15 years, but I haven't been able to conjure them for months now. People need to see them more than ever these days. What does that mean? It's my devotions and prayers that keep them lit. But lately, when I try to pray, all I can think about are the hollowborn all over the city, the grieving families, the refugees. She shakes her head. How can Megrin allow us to suffer like this? What strength do we gain from a soulless child? Dern grunts with disdain. What strength do we gain from adversity, from trial and test? The fires don't wither because she lacks in faith. They wither because she does not understand how to be faithful to a whore. A whore wants neither praise nor devotion. A whore wants to be compensated for her services. And Megrin is paid and pleasured in sweat and struggle and pain. This mewling imbecile is unworthy of Megrin's womanly heat. Jeez, Durrance, that was a bit harsh. And this is shaking your faith. Shrug. Take heart and don't abandon your faith too easily. Well, let's see about shaking faith. She nods, running her hands through her hair. But I believe Megra may be speaking to me again. She frowns and casts a quick glance in your direction. Lately I've been seeing visions, a place in the wilderness with pools filled with sunbursts of color, strange falls that seem to rise to the heavens even while they splash into the earth. She raises her hands as a framing an image of her vision. Behind the falls is a cave, filled with fire and heat and danger, and some token of my goddess. I know there's something there, but where it is or how I'd get there, she shakes her head. I've been meaning to ask around at the expedition hall to see if anyone recognizes the description. To be honest, though, I don't know what I'd do if I found the place. Hmm. Worthless, like so many of Megrin's flock, afraid of her god's tests. If Megrin speaks to her, it is to hasten the end to this hypocrite's life, and this vision is surely a death trap for the weak. Ah, uh, what's the significance of sacred pyres? They symbolize Megrin's power and guidance, and right now the people of Defiance Bay need to be assured of her presence. She crosses her arms, staring at the statue. Our neighbors in the Valiant Republic see us as superstitious, but we're just sensitive to the signs and warnings of the gods. I like no more of the temple. Megrin is the most revered goddess among the Deer Woodlands. It's no surprise that her temple is part of the Ducal Palace. Her fire symbolizes trials, revolutions, and the blazing of new paths, all of which are important to us. This is the first of the sacred pyres. When this is lit, so are the rest around the city. Quest updated. Okay. Travel to that cave. 
Is there anything else around here? Doesn't look like it. Let's go to the Hall of Records. This may be a bad idea. Yeah, we're, we're not gonna steal, like, right in front of the guards. This is seriously like, the prettiest place we've been yet. What's up with the music all of a sudden? Cool room. Records keeper. The man busies his slender hands, filing scored books and rolls of dusty parchments according to some obscure yet deliberate system. Okay, let's come up here to the gallery. Can we go in the gallery? No, we can't go in the gallery. Go down here. How close are we to leveling up? We keep getting XP. We're still no close. You need a ton of XP for every level. Like an insane amount of XP. Okay. Come talk to this just car. Only people with official invitations are allowed to the Animancy. Okay. So we can't go in there. Back outside we go. But apparently we can go out of it. Sure enough. In Tekoa, we have a memorial for the Saints' War. They say a Rawatai artillery master contributed to the God Hammer Bomb. I wondered if... Of course. You want Rawatai to be a part huh. of this history. Crow about how your people helped the deer wood. Maybe your Ranganui lied a mouth. On second thought, I'll ask anyone else. <laughs> oh, that's an interesting looking get up. Alright, let's see what the soul says. You see a trio of Orleans, bright and gaudy. Their instruments, weapons, as they compete with one another in brutal disharmony. Behind them, a troop of performers roll, jump, and gesture, teeth flashing with exquisite sharpness as they enact some bizarre pantomime. The smallest one, or sorry, the smallest, one mo moment seemingly a child and the next an old man, thrust up seemly at the crowd. Eyes glaze behind his rictus grin. The crowd jostles uncomfortably at his display, dissatisfaction in their midst. No money is thrown, no praise given as the performers continue their display. The crowd disperses uneasy and the man child's grin grows obscene as he watches them go. That was a weird one. We need to go check out the Crucible Keep. Looks like the entrance to it is down here. So we're headed the right way. There's another pyre. Is there a way that we can light the pyres? Oh, I can grab that. Oh, there was zero reason to go up those stairs. This is the place we need to go. This looks like the place Maywald described. And there's a soul walking out to meet us wearing tennis shoes, apparently. New socks. Praise to the exiled queen. May her crown be restored and her justice prevail. Ooh, Come okay. to pay your respects to the queen that was. A ghost hovers in the middle of the ruin, reciting blessings and prayers. Even as the spirit's form shifts and swirls, it retains the face of an elderly man and robes that mark wealth and status. It turns to you. Who are you? Lord Ardwellen Rugfold the Third, and pleased to make your acquaintance. I came to the Deerwood on one of the first ships from Adia. And unlike the yokels and hut dwellers around here, 
I still keep to the old ways. Meaning you're dead? It's truly a pity to see what the locals have done to Wodaka's house of worship. Uh, I was told the temple would be here. And so you did. These savage colonists may have burned it down, but worship of the Oathbinder is alive and well. These stairs lead to the main sanctum. What stairs? It's a weird little blue flower right there in the middle of the screen. These stairs, of course. The sanctum was always below ground, adjacent to the catacombs, so it wasn't destroyed by the fires. He gestures to an impassable pile of rubble like the rest of the ruin. It seems to have remained untouched for over a century. Tell me where I'd find an entrance to these catacombs. There are various entrances throughout Defiance Bay, but I dare say the easiest to reach is in Copper Lane. I haven't been to that part of town in ages, but as I recall, it's somewhere near the southern gate. That's interesting. Okay, what are you doing? Worshipping Wudika, the exiled queen and oathbinder. I come every day to offer my devotion. I'd love nothing more than to book passage back to Adia, but it is my emperor's wish that I serve in these barbaric lands. And so I do. So he doesn't know he's dead, it sounds like. Tell me more about Wudika. A queen among the gods. She oversees laws and oaths. Everything has a rightful place, and Wudika watches over them all. Of course, not everyone accepts this. Even among the other gods, her authority is questioned. But Wudika is also goddess of memory and vengeance, and she remembers. She'll remember every slight and trespass when she reclaims her throne. You know you're a ghost, right? I beg your pardon? Is this some sort of joke where you come from? I'm serious. Look at yourself. A madhouse. That's what this town really needs. Okay. Sigani draws up next to you. You alright? Looked almost like you'd lost your footing for a moment. Let's see. It feels that way when I see into the ether. You really are a watcher, aren't you? Once, in a great many generations, one of my people is born with the ability to speak to souls. Usually such individuals become elders, or a lone set of tracks in the snow. She cocks her head. I would have thought my journey would be easier if I could see what you see, but looking at you, I'm not so sure. My abilities are a blessing, this gift is a curse, you're nosy, I'm not so sure either. Believe it or not, I once would have rejoiced to know I'd be picked to travel far in search of something great, but even these gifts come with a cost, don't they? Forgive me if I was a little skeptical of your abilities before. I can't say I've met a real watcher before. Once you've seen it a few times, the shock wears off. Oh, such a jerk. Every time he goes a little strange in the face, I try and see if I can hear anything. Connor grins. Hasn't worked so far. See if you can get him to tell you what the spirit said. Interesting. Weeds grow thick and full, untroubled by the passage of Kith. I'll grab this. Blood moss. Our ghost friend is still just chilling there. This is obviously where the stairs are. Alright. So, let's go to the keep. And then the embassy, and then I guess we'll go back to Copper Lane. That's kind of annoying, to be honest. Run! I can't see anything to know where I am. There we go. Can we go in? Sure we can. Be nice for a little variety, you know, mix it up. There's my spider friend. This chest card's got a name. What business brings you to the keep? Hello. 
Aldemar gives you an appraising eye. Judging by the scars on his face, he's lucky to be able to do that much. Every day, we get more from the hinterlands, pouring into Defiance Bay. Keeps us busy on the watch, it does. You look like you recently arrived yourself. Were you? A soldier of the Crucible Knights, and proud of it. I help keep everything running at the keep so that the Commander Cliver can focus on more important matters. Looking for something, or just knocking the dirt off your boots? What goes on here? This is the headquarters of the Crucible Knights, so it's where we store arms and armor, as well as where many of our soldiers bunk. Okay, we gotta find the Copper Lane dude's armor here. Commander Cliver's in the back, making plans as usual. He scratches a scarred cheek. You'll find the forge at the west end of the building, along with our Master Smith Dunstan. There's also a shrine to the Golem, if you're the praying type. Tell me about the Knights. We're the defenders of Defiance Bay. We're not exactly a formal knighthood. But don't tell Commander Cliver I said that. He grins. We were the first organized militia to oppose a deer in rule. And today, we're the largest force in the city. Our soldiers undergo years of combat training, and our officers are required to have their souls read by that critter out in Dunnard Row. What's this about Dunnard Row? Just a requirement of the Crucible Knights, so the higher-ups know there's nothing messy built in your soul's past. Aldmar widens the stance. Keeping the ranks pure is fine by me. I just wish they were more careful in hiring their ciphers. What's wrong with their ciphers? He shifts his weight and glances at the empty halls. They're mostly Orlans. I'm sure they're talented enough, but you can't trust them. Hostility is in their nature, and they've learned to hide it over the years. He frowns and crosses his arms. All I'm saying is they should at least be supervised by other folk. That's reasonable enough, isn't it? Mm, if people treated them better, you wouldn't have to worry about them being so hostile. I'm just speaking the truth. Nowadays, it seems that's the biggest crime of all. Yeah, you're a douche. Alright, so we are going to stop here. And I guess we'll look for that dude's armor. Let's look at the quest real quick. Rogue Knight. Yeah, this one. Pinhelm. Oh, I actually have to go to Darnard Row and come back here. Okay, there's a lot to this, but we'll, we'll check this place out next time for sure. As always, guys, I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, make sure to hit the like button. It really helps me out. And I'll see you guys next time.